All right, so here's a problem making use of the definition of the derivative, um, maybe slightly more theoretical this time. We've got a piecewise defined function with a couple of unknown parameters in here, uh, a and b, right? Now, um, for x less than 1, of course, it's just a straight line, okay? And so we, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to adjust, you know, the, the slope and the intercept of that line so that it's going to match up with the graph when x is bigger than or equal to 1 in such a way that our function is differentiable at the point where we transition from one formula to another for the function. Okay, so how are we going to do this? How do we figure out values of a and b that make f differentiable? Um, well, first, we know that if it's going to be differentiable, then f must B continuous at 1. And if it's going to be continuous at 1, the left-hand limit had better equal the right-hand limit. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x, well, that's the limit as x approaches 1 of a plus b x, which is a plus b. Okay. On the other hand, if we approach from the right, well, then we have to use two x squared minus a x, and that's going to give me 2 minus a. And of course, that's also the value of, of f of 1, because we have the, the equals here. Okay. Um, we need these two to be equal if our function is continuous, so that means we must have that um, a plus b has to equal 2 minus a, um, or maybe if we like, we should write this as 2a plus b must equal to 2. Okay, well, that gives us one equation, um, but there are two unknowns. So for any value of a and b satisfying this equation, we can guarantee that this graph is going to be continuous. And what's happening here is if we choose a value of a and b that satisfies this equation, what you're going to see if you were to if you were to plot it is you're going to have you know a, a parabola maybe like this I don't know where the vertex is going to be on one side and then you got a line coming in from the other direction right so you've got a line coming in like that now we've chosen a and b to satisfy this equation that guarantees continuity so it guarantees that those actually join up at that transition point um, but the slope might be wrong, right? So now we want to try and adjust the slope, bring it around until the slope of the line matches the slope coming in from the other direction. And that's where the derivative comes in. So again, for the derivative, because we have, you know, the function changes at 1, we have to look at sort of left and right hand limits for the derivative as well. Um, some people will talk about left and right handed derivatives. So you might even see notation like, f prime minus at 1 for the left-handed derivative, if you want to call it that. This notation is not universal, but eh, let's, let's use it for now. So limit h going to 0 from the left, f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h. Now, because h is less than 0, 1 plus h is less than 1, so we need to use this expression here. So we have a plus b times 1 plus h, subtract. And now f of 1, be careful. We know what it is. We found it down here. 2 minus a over h. Okay. So this gives me 
the limit h going to 0 from the left of, we have 2a, right, a minus minus a, 2a, um, plus b minus 2. Okay, and I've accounted now for that a, that a, that 2, um, that 1. Oh, but I still have a um, b times h over h. All right, so that looks, looks kind of complicated, but here's where continuity comes in, right? Because we know that f has to be continuous in order for it to be differentiable, 2a plus b minus 2. That's zero, right? So you can kind of see that continuity condition popping up here as well. If this wasn't zero, the limit wouldn't exist, right? So here again, we see why the function has to be continuous in order for it to be differentiable. So that's zero. And that leaves me with simply b times h over h. And so I have b. All right, now we do it all over again for the right-hand limit. So we have f of 1 plus h, subtract f of 1 over h. And since h is positive, 1 plus h is bigger than 1, that means we need to use this expression here. So we have 2 times 1 plus h squared minus a times 1 plus h minus 2 minus a, all over h. Okay, so that one's a little bit messier. Let's see what we can do with it. Um, maybe we'll do a little bit of rough work up here at the top. So we have uh, 2 times 1 plus 2h plus h squared um, minus a times 1 plus h minus 2 minus a. So that's going to be 2 plus 4h plus 2h squared minus a minus a h minus 2 plus a. And now we hope for things to cancel. Um, 2 minus 2 a minus a, and that leaves me with the limit, h going to 0 from the right. So everything left there has an h in it. If I factor it out, I've got 4 minus a plus 2h over, over h. Cancel those h's, and we're left with 4 minus a. So the other result we need is that b has to equal 4 minus a, or a plus b has to be 4. Ah, two equations, two unknowns. So we try to sort those out. Uh, not so bad in this case if we subtract the two equations. Um, b minus b is gone. 2a minus a is just a. 2 minus 4 is minus 2. So this gives me a is minus 2. Knowing that a is minus 2, we can quickly work out that b has to be 6. So those are the values that will work.